Earlier today, a zero-day vulnerability in a very popular Java logging library called Log4j was discovered that allows for remote code execution by passing a certain kind of string to the logger. Now let me give you an idea of just how widespread this bug is and just how easy it is to exploit. For one, Log4j is a Java library, and Java is a widely used programming language, especially in the enterprise space. I think we've all seen that message anytime we've had to install or update Java for an application to run, that three billion devices run Java. Phones, computers, routers, servers, maybe even your toaster runs Java. So there's likely tens or even hundreds of millions of devices out there running this logging software. It's baked into all kinds of commonly used services like Steam, Spotify, and iCloud. Devices running those could be vulnerable to this, but screw hacking normies or these servers that are running their streaming services. Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing, Cloudflare and Amazon, which together make up a major backbone of the entire internet, all could be vulnerable to this zero day that allows for remote code execution. And RCE is a serious thing. It usually doesn't take much more for somebody to then gain full control over the server that is running that software. Anything that is running Apache Struts, an Elk Stack, or even standalone Java apps could be vulnerable. In fact, this is where the vulnerability was first discovered in a popular Java app, Minecraft. For a few hours, this was just seen as a Minecraft hack and hadn't made its way into the InfoSec world where it created a gigantic dumpster fire. And all you have to do to exploit this in Minecraft specifically is pass a string like this to the console or even the chat, which then gets passed to the logger and boom, it gives you remote code execution. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Now, I don't know who thought it would be a good idea to make a logger that resolves LDAP addresses or that evaluates and then tries to execute arbitrary text, but it does. That's a feature of Log4j. Well, not all versions of Log4j. Thankfully, some versions don't actually load remote code using LDAP by default, but they are still vulnerable to slightly more complex forms of remote code execution. But for the ones that are using LDAP, this exploit requires no skill at all to execute. You saw how easy it was to do it in Minecraft. This is something that I would imagine for a few hours when this was first discovered, there were probably a bunch of little kids that were wrecking one another's Minecraft servers with this. No skill at all, anybody could do it. So anywhere that a Java app or an online service that's running this logger on its backend exists, anywhere that a user can input a string like this, that could be an attack vector for this vulnerability. This is, I, I can't even really think of something recently that's been this bad. This is maybe like shell shock or the Spectre vulnerability. There's tons of scanning that is going on right now on the internet to find services that are using this and exploit them all around the world. People are scrambling to try and fix this before a hacker with an anime profile picture finds a way to take over Amazon's automation system or leak blueprints for some kind of top secret fighter jet or launches a freaking missile. And this is also something that a lot of standard security systems that corporations and enterprises might be using. It's not even something that it'll necessarily stop because of the way that this vulnerability occurs. It's exploiting a logging functionality. That for one is such a widespread feature in the enterprise space, especially using a very detailed logging function like what Log4j provides. And when data is coming into your server to be logged, there usually isn't a lot of security checks that occur at that point. Generally, you're just going to be logging whatever is going on, and probably you don't really think about the logging details of an event being written to your logging system as an attack vector. 
You know, I actually just remembered an attack that happened relatively recently, I mean, a few years ago, that this is probably going to be comparable to. I think we could compare this to the Struts 2 vulnerability. That was discovered back in 2017. And the really scary thing about Struts 2 is that it only took about 48 hours after the discovery of that bug and how to exploit it for companies that hadn't patched their services within that time frame to start getting hacked. One of the results of that vulnerability was a huge data breach, the Equifax data breach, which resulted in the personal info of 147 million people being exposed. And this wasn't even just Americans. This was Canadians, people in the UK, people from all over the world's personal details were in that Equifax data breach. And I think that the damage caused by this vulnerability could actually end up being further reaching for a number of reasons. So if the timeline is going to be similar, if it takes just 48 hours, like in the Struts 2 vulnerability, for this to go from kids that are hacking each other's Minecraft servers to Fortune 500 companies getting hacked and having critical information, personal information of their companies, or of their customers rather, leaked onto the internet. If the timeline of this is similar, that means that there is going to have to be a lot of incident response people working very late into the night tonight on a Friday. And for some of them, it's already Saturday. And they're also going to have to work over the weekend to try and secure their servers and their services against this. When you combine that with the fact that it's the middle of December, so there are a lot of people that have already gone on vacation. Like I know at my job, uh, which thankfully our services aren't vulnerable to this, but we're kind of on a skeleton crew right now. A lot of people have already taken time off for Christmas. And also in the United States, there is a labor shortage right now. So a lot of these places could already be short staffed and with backfill. I know at my job, we've had backfill for a couple of quarters now, so like six months. Uh, and the timeline to properly patch a vulnerability like this happening right now could be a little bit longer than what we've seen in the past. And when it takes 48 hours to go from discovery of something to actual companies being hacked, every minute counts. So it's not a matter of if there will be data breaches. I think it's pretty safe to say that there will be data breaches. There will be some interesting leaks like we've seen in the past few months. Now, there is some mitigating steps that you can take right now to hopefully reduce or just outright remove the attack potential, or at least the very simple script kitty potential that everybody is going to try to do on every service out there. Uh, so for one, you should make sure that Java is updated. If you are on something newer than Java 8, it is currently believed that you're relatively safe, which let's be honest, if you're using Java 8 or something older than that, you're really rolling the dice with your security. But again, this is a very new exploit, so that could change needing to just update to something newer than Java 8. But I would say just updating to the newest version of Java that you can if you really have to use Java is a good first step. And also make sure that you aren't using a vulnerable version of Log4j. It appears that Apache just recently released a new version that should be patched or again at least patched against what's known so far so this is something you should keep an eye on if you're using this library or of course you could try using a different logging library altogether other than log4j which i hope a lot of people are going to start looking into because to me the feature that led to this vulnerability seemed like a really bad idea from the start and could and should have been totally avoided. So get to patching your Minecraft servers, but only after leaving a like and a comment on this video to hack the algorithm, let's exploit the algorithm as much as log4j is being exploited. And have a great rest of your day.